Okay, settle down, everybody. We're, we're, we're going to start. Uh, I'm very uh, uh, happy to uh, open up uh, this uh, teacher's conference. The teacher's conference is always a highlight in the KITP year, and this year is no exception. In fact, I'm extremely excited about the topic uh, this year, uh, world, Worlds Suited for Biology. We have a star-studded, no pun, uh, cast of <laughs> speakers. Um, I have a few things to say before, uh, kind of administrative things, before we get to the substance of the program. Lars uh, Bilston usually does this, but he's sick today. Um, he's exploring what it's like to be, uh, I think, uh, part bacterial community uh, right now, unfortunately. And uh, uh, he couldn't make it. But he usually asks, how many people in the room are here for the first time? So could I see a raise? Uh, oh, OK. So a smattering. Uh, that's good. Uh, we try to mix in people who've never been here before uh, with those who've been here. I think some people said 13 times. Or <laughs> well, there, there are some of you who are uh, in that category. Um, well, that's great. I'm glad. Uh, so welcome here. Um, it's a unique place. Everything's recorded, so if you miss uh, Anything, if you're taking notes, uh, don't worry about it because you can go to our website later on. Everything is archived. We've got thousands of talks archived going back, I think, to the late 1990s. I'm looking for confirmation, but I believe that's the case. Um, uh, we've designed these talks so that they're 45 minutes long with 15 minutes for discussion. So please avail yourself of the discussion period because sometimes that's when things uh, come into focus. Uh, and uh, another point is that we'd like to record everything, so wait for the microphone. If you have a question, someone will bring, raise your hand, someone will bring the microphone to you. Uh, that's so we can pick it up in our recording. Um, staff are wearing name badges like, like mine. If you need any help, uh, don't forget to bring your receipts to our staff members because uh, if you get it done now, it's a lot easier than having to do it through the mail. Uh, wireless, let's see, I think it's over here. Here is the password, uh, airport123456. And uh, I don't know if people can see the, it's KITP Conf is the, is the, the name. Oh, thank you. Thanks. OK, everyone can see it, sorry. Uh, bathrooms, uh, there's a couple sets. If you hang a left as you go out of this room, there's a men's and women's room uh, across from the common area. If you go straight down this hallway, there's a men's room on the first floor and a corresponding women's room on the second floor. You, if you have a car, if you parked in lot 10, you should have used uh, the fifth floor. And uh, there's a kiosk where you could have chosen uh, your parking uh, uh, thing there. If you haven't done that, uh, uh, they may ticket you. Uh, <laughs> you may have a couple hours leeway. Uh, I, I would take care of it during a break, maybe. Um, the shuttles, uh, the shuttles will leave. Uh, fairly promptly after the last talk today if you're using uh, any of our uh, shuttle vans. OK, um, I think uh, I'm going to go uh, and just say a few words about our topic today. Uh, it's an in unusual topic. Uh, some of the terms, uh, like biology, are, <laughs> are uh, not completely foreign to physics, but I think from a physics perspective, a physicist might say, we don't know what biology is, because we don't know how to define life in its most general terms. And that's all correct. As a biophysicist, I can tell you we don't know how to define what life is. We don't understand it. 
as a general phenomenon. We don't know what its limits are. We don't know what the configuration space is. So to have a physics conference devoted to world suited for biology raises a lot of questions. And I think uh, our speakers today will get to the heart of this issue uh, in stages, uh, perhaps. But uh, maybe the best way to figure out what life is is to simply go out there and look and see what what is the extent of the possibilities uh, that the universe presents us. So uh, uh, I'm excited by the topic. I think your students will be excited by this topic. Uh, it touches on many areas of physics and many areas of science. And uh, I know when I was a student, uh, these questions kept me up at night thinking about uh, what it meant for uh, television shows to be beaming past uh, Epsilon, Eridani, and Talisede, and, pla and places uh, near nearby star systems where we're going to be visited in a, you know, in, in uh, a few years. Okay, so uh, I'm going to turn it over to Scott Tremaine, who's the chair of our first session. He's in charge of keeping our first speaker in line. And he's going to say a few words also. There's Scott. Uh, I'm Scott Tremaine. I'm visiting here for a couple of weeks from the Institute for Advanced Study uh, in Princeton. Uh, and my main job this morning is to introduce uh, the first speaker, Eric Ford. Uh, Eric has been a central figure in the exoplanet community for 20 years, starting when he was an undergraduate at MIT and published uh, what is still one of the most uh, uh, one of the competitive models for the formation of hot Jupiters, uh, giant planets like Jupiter found hundreds of times closer to their host star uh, than Jupiter is. Uh, now we still don't know if Eric's idea is correct, uh, <laughs> but despite that, he's had a, a very successful uh, a career. He went on from MIT to be a graduate student at, at uh, Princeton postdoctoral fellow at Berkeley and Harvard, a faculty member at Florida, and moved just last year uh, to Penn State. Uh, Eric's interests, uh, in our research interests, are focused on celestial mechanics, that is, the study of dynamical interactions uh, between planets and how they might shape the properties of our own solar system and of other uh, planetary systems on astrobiology, um, and on uh, data. On, uh, Eric's been a central member of the Kepler team, and one of his uh, interesting research foci is the use of computationally intensive techniques for data analysis. That is, given that we have enormous computing power today, if you're willing to just uh, throw a huge amount of uh, computational effort at a set of data, how much extra information can you extract uh, from the data uh, than you otherwise could. He's a member of the High Performance Computing Center at Penn State, the Center for Astrobiology at Penn State, the Center for Exoplanets at Penn State, uh, and a couple of others, the Center for Astrostatistics, and a couple of others that I can't remember. Eric. 